Well, this is pretty exciting. This is my third video made here on today, the 5th of June, 2018. I guess that's what happens when you make relatively short videos. And we're looking at problem 5.2.3, which you can see is not labeled with an S, so it's not an old actuarial exam problem. However, it's certainly of a type that I could imagine being on an actuarial exam too. It's related still to dollar-weighted and time-weighted rates of return, so it's still stuff you should know about. Problem solving wise, it's a little tougher than the examples from the last couple of videos. We'll be calculating an interest rate that is both a dollar weighted or money weighted rate of return for one year and a time weighted rate of return for a second year. On January 1st of 2013, an investment account is worth $100,000. Three months later, on April 1st, 2013, its value has increased to $103,000, and at that time, $8,000 is withdrawn. Two years after the start, January 1st, 2015, the account is worth 103992 Assuming the dollar-weighted or money-weighted method for 2013 and a time-weighted method for 2014, the effective annual interest rate was X for both 2013 and 2014, but again, thought of differently in each case. The goal of the problem is to calculate X. So we make a timeline. And here it is important to think about when that withdrawal is, happen withdrawal is happening, because we're using dollar weighted or money weighted for the first year. We have time zero, time one, time two. Well, let's put these amounts to be in thousands. So we would have 100,000 at time zero. Uh, that is growing to 103,000 at time 0.25, right? April 1st is three months into the year. One quarter of the way through the year, we have 0.75 or three quarters of the year left. Its value has gone up to 103,000, but we withdraw 8,000. And so the new balance after that withdrawal is 95,000. We're not told you have any other withdrawals or deposits. We're told then at time two, January 1st, 2015, the value is up to 103,992, which in thousands would be 103.992. Since we are going to think, be thinking about time-weighted rate of return for the second year, we are going to need to know the balance at time one, or at least have a symbol for it. Let's call it Y for the balance at time one. And now let's think about the first year. Again, for dollar weighted or money weighted, you really are thinking about the same kind of idea as with internal rate of return or yield rate, except you use simple interest rather than compound interest. We're doing it for one year. We've got a deposit at time zero that stays in the account for the entire first year. So it gets multiplied by one plus X to find its value at time one, its accumulated value. Then we have the withdrawal of eight, put a minus eight, that's in the account for 0.75 amount of time. So it gets multiplied by one plus 0.75x, again, since we are thinking about simple interest. And this has to be the accumulated balance at time one, which we're calling y. So there's our first equation. Get the next equation by thinking about the second year. We're thinking about the time-weighted method for the second year. So we just look at the ratio, 103.992 divided by y minus one, that would have to equal x. Or another way to look at that is to say 103.992 divided by y equals one plus x. So I hope it's pretty clear that you can just simplify this expression, solve it for y, it's already solved for y, plug it into this expression, and then solve for x. So this is going to simplify to, first of all, 100 minus eight is 92. And then we have 100x minus 8 times 0.75x. 8 times 0.75 is 6. 100 minus 6 is 94. So 92 plus 94x would equal y. Substitute that into this equation for y. We're going to get a quadratic equation in x that evidently is going to be complicated enough that we'll have to use the quadratic formula. 103. 0.992 over 92 plus 94x will equal 1 plus x. Multiply both sides by 92 plus 94x. 
92 times 1 is 92. 92x plus 94x is going to be 186x, and then plus 94x squared. Subtract 103.992 from both sides and rearrange. 94x squared plus 186 times x minus, what would it be, be a minus 11.992 would equal 0. Now use the quadratic formula and evidently take the positive square root, because in all likelihood x is going to be positive here. So we have the square root of 186 squared minus 4 times 94 times, careful, negative 11.992 all divided by 2 times 94, and that's of course 188. So now we'll start using our calculator here. Um, 186 squared is 34,596. I think I'll solve this without writing anything more down. I'll, I'll store this in register 0. I've got two minus signs making a plus. I can just do 4 times 94 times 11.992. Two minus signs again making a plus. Add this to what's in register 0. Take the square root. So the square root's about 197.7498. Subtract 186. Divide by 188. And there's our value of x approximately 0 0.0625, 6.25%, and that is the correct answer for x, it turns out. So again, you can look over this problem and think about it again, try it on your own, double check what I've done, this is the correct answer.